Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me in this event. Uh, I would like to share my thoughts on the importance of uh, open access and building open educational resources uh, in time of the pandemic. As you can see in the background, uh, this is uh, the drawing that that um, that mainly contains my my talk here. So you can all uh, download the, the drawing uh, from the link that will be available soon. So everyone, this story takes us back to the early days of the pandemic. Right? Uh, it was in 2010s. Suddenly, our life was very uh, contained, very, very limited. We are not even allowed to do the simple thing. One of them is uh, going to our own office. Right? Some of some of us may now have found a balance or the most effective way to deal with the situation, uh, but. Uh, still many of us uh, who still encounter many obstacles, right? uh, especially those of us who don't have adequate online uh, support. Although we have been living online for quite some time, most of us still work in offline mode as uh, the default mode. All of our uh, work as academia, including teaching, research, and community outreach, is stored offline on the hard drives uh, in our computer at campus. Uh, some of us are still fanatical about relying on desktop devices on campus, right? Uh, so all data, uh, files, photos, uh, desktop uh, laboratory analysis reports are stored in our computer on campus. This situation is certainly the drawback, right, in the midst of the pandemic. The problem uh, has worsened with the use of conventional closed network system, which results in all of our work being inaccessible uh, from home, right? Uh, until we face the pandemic, many people don't know uh, about the term virtual private network, right? Or VPN. Uh, so it's a small piece of software that allows us to access a closed campus, campus network from our home. Right? So far, the, the access problem has been resolved right, by the, the small program called the VPN. Um, but academics can work from home in peace by downloading files that were previously only available uh, offline in, in a computer on campus. Right? Uh, various scientific resources subscribed by the library can also be accessed from the convenience of our home. Uh, however, as also had occurred in the pre-pandemic uh, era, the freedom of access, uh, especially from the library, uh, will only occur on the large campus and rich campuses. Right? Most academies do not have access to, to, to it, especially uh, to build open educational resources. So in this case, uh, the access problem has been resolved right, by the use of VPN software, but the problem now shift to the legal aspect of the material. Some of the teaching materials come from our own research activities, and they also can come from uh, activities from other group, right? Or other faculty, other campus, right? Uh, some of these materials have been published and some have not. Some of us think that the published material is free for reuse, right? But we are uh, not realizing that uh, some of the materials has been released uh, under all right reserve uh, type of documents, right? Uh, document of this type will require special permissions. Although the world 
uh, also recognized as fair use, but still we uh, mostly we are asked to request uh, permission to reuse the material. The problem of reusing research results from academic purposes, for academic purposes, sorry, for example, for teaching or open educational resources, can be a minor problem for some people. But in the case of Indonesia and also most uh, Southeast Asian countries, uh, the the uh, reusing research material is still a problem, right? For example, in the field of earth science, uh, that is my field, there are no or very few, uh, uh, at least uh, simple materials like photographs, right? So there's no or very few photographs of Indonesian geological object that can be reused regularly, right? Although we know uh, there are many people, many of us taking selfies in front of a geological object, but still uh, most of the, the photographs, at least, uh, uh, were not shared uh, uh, under uh, open licenses, right? So open access here still defined as just being download downloadable. So uh, making documents to be downloadable, to be accessible. So that is the, the scope of uh, open access. But yet creating open access material is only part of opening access. Right, so because uh, in our case here, uh, even if a photograph can be downloaded and can be used uh, in our teaching materials, for instance, but if we look at the legal aspect, uh, those materials uh, uh, legally cannot cannot be used uh, reused without permission, right? Because uh, uh, those materials are released without uh, without open license. So furthermore, in this discussion, at least in a small campus uh, area, so in, in a certain campus, it is highly recommended that lecturers in, those, in the campus share scientific resources more freely, right? Uh, among among uh, the same uh, lecturers from the same uh, university. At least all materials can be uploaded to a, a dedicated server with an open license. So uh, every everyone in the campus can reuse the materials for the common good. Right? At this point, various research results from campus, uh, from campus uh, researchers, teachers, uh, in form of data, images, photos, maps, should be used together legally to develop open educational resources. But in this case, uh, we are still talking about uh, a very close, very narrow scope of, of resource sharing uh, in the same university. But if the university leaders think uh, visionary, then this kind of sharing information, sharing uh, uh, resources can be widened, right? If, if uh, we can share among ourselves in the same university, what makes, uh, it is very easy for us to also widen the, the, the sharing, uh, sharing system, uh, especially if we use FAIR principles findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. In this way, more educational institutions can, can share their, their resources, their information resources, the, their result results to other university. So uh, everyone can, can uh, reuse the, the materials and then develop it according to uh, his or her needs, right? So, so the, the, the materials can be uh, can be developed uh, uh, very extensively, right? Isn't this the key to a more efficient education system, right? So uh, it is well recognized, at least in Indonesia and also in in other Southeast Asian countries, that resource sharing policy may vary, 
right? But here we highlight common interest, right? So people can reuse stuff and then uh, can develop the, the, the materials uh, according to, to the needs and then they can share it and then other people can reuse it and develop develop it again. So there is a common interest, right? So in the future, open access policies need to be emphasized uh, at least at the university level. And then if we have the uh, opportunity, we can bring it to the national level, especially with the release of UNESCO uh, recommendation for open science. So that's it, uh, my, my presentation uh, to point out the importance of opening access to our uh, uh, research activity, our research results, uh, so other people can built upon uh, our our uh, outputs uh, to create and one of them to create open access open educational resources uh, and then we can see that those material can grow extensively if if everyone share it under uh, open access license so that's it everyone thank you for having me my name is Dasapta. I work as a geologist uh, in Institute Technology Bandung, Indonesia. Bye-bye.